Welcome to our YouTube video series looking at the legal distinctions as between independent contractors and employees and what the potential legal implications arises therefrom. In this particular video, we are going to explore the situation further, however, from a slightly different perspective, in that we are going to look at the binary nature of independent contractor versus employee as brought to the fore by the words of golfer Phil Mickelson in relation to his independent contractor status as to the PGA or Professional Golf Association and his engagement on the rival Live Golf Invitational Series. In certain legal classifications, things are binary. And in legal classifications for purposes of specific employment matters, that is also the case. So, so when it comes to the classification of an individual's work engagement, they are either an independent contractor or not. And if they are not an independent contractor, then they are an employee. It is an entirely binary determination, such that if you are not an independent contractor, you are an employee, and there is not an alternate designation that one might qualify for. And this would appear to be the challenge that the PGA or Professional Golf Association finds itself in with respect to certain golfers from the PGA who are playing on the rival Live Golf Invitational Series and was raised by Phil Mickelson that they are independent contractors pursuant to their arrangement with the PGA. So they should be capable of engaging other payors, which is a prerequisite for being an independent contractor. But as is the case with most entities that pay people, they want to impose their own set of controls, even if this contravenes the classification requirements that they are supposed to be following. And this would appear to be the situation that the PGA is finding itself in, should it fall through on the threats that it has publicly issued to golfers who look to play in this rival golf league. Because when things are going well and there's no incentive for the individuals involved to exercise their legal rights, no one typically challenges the rules that have been imposed upon them, even if it means that one is operating under an improper classification. The challenge arises when the payer seeks to enforce their own rules, which effectively conflicts with the classification requirements and the legal requisites attendant thereto. And that is the dangerous ground that we now see the PGA potentially moving into given that they wish to gain the benefits associated with having none of the PGA Tour golfers classified as employees, but instead have them all deemed independent contractors, yet subject to their particular membership rules and requirements. And this is where it gets murky. Because as golfer Kevin Na, who effectively resigned from the PGA prior to playing in the Live Golf Invitational Series, said, the PGA attains the image rights to their golfers on the PGA Tour. Now, I haven't delved into this excessively. Nonetheless, if one were an independent contractor and the legal standard is that you should be working for other payors, not just the P PGA, as is one of the tests of being an independent contractor, dispensing with one's image rights as opposed to providing the image rights for a specific golf tournament would appear contradictory to being an independent contractor. Similarly, the decision to not allow any golfer to receive the PGA's own established waiver so as to be able to compete in the live golf event, so as to establish absolute power over the golfers, even though the absence of any particular golfer, were they in fact an independent contractor, would not of itself jeopardize their own event. And this from a Canadian who has gone to far too many Canadian Opens, which is the very golf event in question, and seen far too many of the top PGA players missing, including the absence of Tiger Woods while he was in his prime, being absent on every occasion. Although I did see him in the United States at the Phoenix Open and other golf events. As such, we know that this is quite hypocritical, especially when one puts in the added threats of fines, suspensions, and expulsions coming from the head of the PGA. What we instead find is that we are moving into a comparable situation that all too many individuals engaged as independent contractors find themselves in, and that is being classified as independent contractors, 
yet their payor is in fact demanding that they accept employment obligations without getting the associated benefits of employment. And as we said at the outset, in far too many instances, this is a binary determination, such that one is either an independent contractor or they are not. And if they aren't an independent contractor, then they are an employee and must receive all the legal rights and benefits associated with employment, which the payor would prefer not to do. One cannot manipulate the law in that manner, although such an effort is constantly being pursued until it faces a challenge to its legitimacy. As is the situation with the PGA, whose golfers are purportedly independent contractors, though subject to PGA membership rules, which in effect may well have invalidated their independent contractor status and thereby pushed them into the position of employees, which could well create all sorts of legal and tax problems for the PGA should they pursue their threatened path forward and certain golfers seek to push back against the PGA's possible adverse actions that would bring their entire claim of the golfers being independent contractors into the legal and tax crosshairs. It will definitely be interesting to see how this plays out and how this could potentially have wider legal implications to the classification system of independent contractors and employees. Thank you.